So you're just trying out Guild Wars 2 and you see the warrior, tried and true and ever fast standing staple of the MMORPG genre. Also known as a fighter or a barbarian or even a berserker, you are ready to start wailing away with furious anger, but you have no idea where to start. Well, that's where I'm going to help you out. This is the new player's guide to the warrior in Guild Wars 2. While this guide will be a focus on the core spec, I will briefly cover the berserker, the spellbreaker, and the bladesworn. Let's get into it. First, getting started with the class, the warrior's profession mechanic is their adrenaline bar. While in combat, warriors gain adrenaline. This bar fills up with frothing rage until they use a burst attack, which is a much more powerful strike that correlates with whatever weapon the warrior is using at the time. These burst skills go on a short cooldown until the warrior has earned enough adrenaline to utilize it again. These burst skills can be utilized as long as there is a single adrenaline bar filled. The effectiveness, however, of the strike depends on the amount of adrenaline used, up to a cap of three. Warriors can also swap weapons with full adrenaline to instantly use a burst skill with a new weapon set. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tray lines. The warrior has access to everything a regimented combatant would need to capitalize its combat. They gain access to strength, arms, defense, tactics, and discipline. Strength emphasizes dodging and brute force. This trait line can also improve physical skills as well as use of the greatsword. The arms trait line improves critical hits and condition damage primarily, but can also improve the sweet sweet dual wielding melee warrior. Defense obviously emphasizes mitigating damage while offering ways to counter and stun enemies. Tactics is unique as it primarily focuses on supporting allies with might generation as well as being able to heal using their shout skills. Discipline focuses on weapon swapping as well as giving some improvements to adrenaline generation for more burst skills. Warriors can be quite versatile depending on the role they are trying to fill. The warrior quite literally has access to the most amount of weapons in game with only a few weapons outside of their reach currently. The warrior can use with two hands the great sword, the hammer, the longbow, and the rifle. Main hand they can use the axe, the mace, and the sword. Offhand, they can use an axe, a mace, a shield, a warhorn, and a sword. With the Weapon Master training or their respective elite specializations, the warrior can utilize a dagger in both main and offhand, and offhand torch, as well as offhand pistol. The greatsword is the most iconic for the warrior, offering incredible strike damage and fantastic mobility. The burst skill is Arcing Slice, that spins an attack around you, dealing incredible damage to low HP enemies. This ability also grants Fury, which increases your critical strike chance. The hammer brings the boom with strong area of effect while also strong crowd control. The burst skill is Earthshaker, which jumps to an area dealing damage and stunning all enemies caught in the epicenter. The longbow is a condition damage oriented weapon, being able to hit from incredible distance and lighting targets ablaze with burning damage. The burst skill is Combustive Shot, which ignites an area with intensive burning damage. The rifle is a single target weapon that strikes with high power power damage. The burst skill is kill shot, which is a slow windup for massive damage onto a single target. The main hand axe attacks swiftly and builds adrenaline even faster. Its burst skill is eviscerate that leaps to an enemy and deals more damage based off of the amount of adrenaline spent. It also grants might when it connects. The mace tends to be a more defensive oriented weapon that can block and daze enemies. The burst skill is Skullcrack that stuns a single enemy for a duration depending on the amount of adrenaline used. The sword is a condition damage style weapon that offers great mobility and even more bleeding. The burst skill is Flurry, which roots the warrior in place, immobilizes the enemies, and then stacks intensive bleeding with every strike. The main hand dagger slows and disables enemies with fast attacks. The dagger burst skill is Breaching Strike, which deals damage and removes boons from the target. It deals significantly more damage if your target doesn't have any boons. The offhand axe brutally strikes with both weapons or spins rapidly for devastating effect. The offhand mace inflicts vulnerability while also being able to knock enemies down. The shield offers some crowd control as well as an incredibly strong block, whereas the offhand sword can block attacks as well or inflict strong condition damage. The warhorn is a support weapon that provides great boons and barriers to nearby allies while the torch emphasizes burning and condition damage. The offhand dagger strikes and removes boons. It can also reflect some projectiles coming in through the front while also granting a barrier. 
carrier. And lastly, the pistol attacks with brutal force, being able to deal strong strike damage as well as resetting one of their abilities. At the time of recording this video, the warrior is set to get a new weapon capability in the staff, which truly gives the warrior the most versatile weapon kit at their disposal. The warriors have unique utility skills that complement their diverse weapon set. Warriors have access to banners, physical skills, shouts, signets, and stance skills. The banner skills produce a literal banner at the location that pulses benefits to nearby allies or pulses negative effects to enemies. Physical skills tend to be oriented around crowd control, but are incredibly unique on their own. Shout skills tend to be support focused, providing boons to allies or some negative effects to enemies. Signet skills provide strong passive and powerful active effects while stance skills provide positive effects that last for a short duration. Each of these utility skills provide excellent benefit for their build setups and allow the warrior to be a strong player really in any form of endgame content. The warrior tends to be an upfront and melee powerhouse. Given the amount of melee weapons they have access to, it makes sense. With their great vitality pool, they can handle close quarter combats for quite a while. They do have some condition damage options, however, they tend to be outshined by their strike damage choices. Typically, most builds tend to offer quite a bit of my generation, which increases all outgoing damage for a time, and also given some of their defensive abilities, they can offer some great sustain and strong durability, making them an excellent choice for new players. Here are some leveling tips to get you started with your warrior. First, the warrior is versatile with all the weapons they have access to, so pairing two weapons together that have synergy can work incredibly well. For example, using the Greatsword Burst ability grants fury, then switching to the dual axes Use the dual strike for the quickness boon, then whirling axe, the offhand axe 5 ability to stack up some incredible damage very, very quickly. Speaking of your burst abilities, the warrior can cap out with adrenaline and also still have their burst ability on cooldown, so don't be afraid to swap weapons and use the offset weapon skills burst ability. Take this with a grain of salt, however, there may be some times that you are waiting for an enemy's vulnerability or you need to land crucial crowd control, so assess each situation to your advantage. Lastly, the warrior signet skills can provide a simple choice for the leveling warrior, as passive effects make you more effective in combat while also not being punished for the timing of their use. This is just my opinion, however. The warrior being oriented around mostly strike damage can greatly benefit from Berserker's or even Assassin's gear set. Given their high base defensive stats, they can be much more aggressive compared to other professions. If playing with more condition damage in mind, i.e. the swords or the longbow, they may look to take either Grieving or Vipers. However, despite the amount of condition damage oriented around there with their skills, they still also do quite a bit of strike damage. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lead specializations. First, we have the Berserker, the elite specialization for the warrior from the Heart of Thorns expansion. This new elite spec is an offensive powerhouse, gaining access to the Berserk mode, an additional mechanic next to their burst skills. This new skill offers them a Berserk mode, which allows them to use primal bursts, which amplify their burst skills greatly, while also allowing them to build adrenaline to use primal burst skills again in rapid succession. Once the Berserk mode times out, they will have to wait a time before they can reactivate it again. In that time, they still have access to their normal burst skills. The Berserker also gains access to Rage skills, unique to the Berserker. Each of these skills have their own specific primary effects, however, they also can extend the duration of Berserk mode when used during said Berserk mode. This is dependent on each skill, some requiring enemies to be either nearby and some abilities requiring you to connect with an enemy to extend the that berserk. The berserker also gains access to the torch, or if you have the weapon master training. The torch again inflicts a number of harmful conditions on enemies while also being able to crowd control and even cleanse the berserker. Without a doubt, the berserker definitely brings the heat. Now we have the spellbreaker from the Path of Fire expansion. The spellbreaker has a massive emphasis on balance and boon stripping of enemies, sacrificing some of their adrenaline bars to gain access to full counter, an additional profession mechanic. The full counter ability absorbs the next attack, then counter attacks all nearby foes, damaging them and interrupting their abilities. The Spellbreaker also gains access to meditation skills, which can remove boons, 
taunt foes, and even create a massive area that blocks projectiles from entering, while also still removing more boons. As mentioned earlier, the Spellbreaker gains access to dual daggers, which can daze, remove more boons, and even reflect forward-facing projectiles. The daggers also attack very fast, with the main skill chain having increased effects with critical hits. The Spellbreaker tends to be a very strong pick for keeping the fight fair and on equal playing fields. And lastly, we have the Bladesworn, the End of Dragons Elite Specialization. The Bladesworn foregoes their ability to swap weapons in place of their Gunsaber profession mechanic, and removing adrenaline bars for flow. The Gunsaber is an alternative weapon set that combines sword and bullets for dire effect. The Bladesworn also gains access to Dragon Trigger, a unique and powerful state that charges up a Dragon Slash, which is a single attack that can annihilate many enemies from a single blow. This state consumes flow to gain charging, or until the Bladesworn runs out of flow, or the Bladesworn activates one of the three dragon slashes. The dragon slashes deal more damage based off of the amount of charges it consumes. Dragon slash force is an immediate attack around the area of the Bladesworn, and it deals the most damage. Dragon Slash Boost moves the Bladesworn in a line, slashing all enemies that come in contact with the Bladesworn. And lastly, Dragon Slash Reach sends out a blade of air forward in a line as a projectile dealing damage to enemies in a straight line. Flow is gained at a constant interval while in combat, and any skills or traits that gain adrenaline will instead now gain flow at a faster rate. The Gunsaber is a unique tool as it tends to offer a variety of skills that can either deal damage or offer some sweet mobility. However, the artillery slash can consume some of the charges you build up when you are in combat. The Gunsaber can also be swapped in and out with a normal warrior weapon set, meaning that you can still come back to your greatsword and then jump back into the gunsaber. The Bladesworn also gains access to armament skills, which are oriented around the profession mechanic in the Dragon Trigger. These skills tend to interact either with the flow rate, ammunition charges, and can even reduce the recharge of your next Dragon Trigger ability. Bladesworn gains access to the Pistol Offhand, which works in kind of conjunction with these abilities by dealing damage and then being able to recharge the Dragon's Roar ability, which pushes you back slightly based off of the amount of ammunition spent. The Bladesworn has one of the most unique profession mechanics in the game and adds an incredibly fun playstyle to the Warrior. The Warrior is without a doubt one of the biggest staples in any MMORPG, and here in Guild Wars 2, they are an absolute monster that brings fast and furious gameplay with just the right amount of anger. If you're interested in seeing the new player's guide for the Wild One in and of the Ranger, click this video here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks. <laughs>